Hi everyone, in this video I want to start a series about the resolution of a ball trajectory inside a beard table. It is a dynamic system, also called dynamical beard. If you have ever wondered when playing beard what is the logic of the trajectory, is it periodic, is it determinist, and I'm sure you did, you are in the right place. The solution of this kind of equation is an active area of research. The aim is to understand the behavior and properties of the curved trajectory by changing the shape of the billiard, square, ellipse, triangle, and so on. And this is what we will do here. We will start with a simplest case, the square, and each time we will try to answer to this question with no guarantee what is the solution for the trajectory equation for this particular shape. Such a solution contains all the information of the problem and is very valuable. Before starting the resolution, let me show you the rules that a dynamical billiard follow. First, there is one particle moving at a constant speed and in a straight line. Frequently, the particle hits the boundary with a specular reflection and keeps the same speed. So the system don't lose energy. There is only three parameters that can change the trajectory of the ball. The initial position, x0 and y0, and the initial angle, theta, at which the ball is hidden. This means that once these two parameters are fixed, there is only one unique possible trajectory. The solution we are searching is a position vector composed of x of t and y of t, and there will be our target function. We will try to express this function depending on the initial condition. So let's begin the resolution. To find the function x and y, I will proceed by elimination. I will show you that from what we know about the motion properties, there can be only one class of function x and y. We know that the trajectory is at a constant speed. It is only composed of straight line and eventually some bones and it is continuous. So x and y component can be anything else than secants of straight line continuous with bounces in the middle. And this kind of function has actually a name. These are the piecewise linear function, our first class of function f1. Let's explore the impact of specular reflection inside the square. And let's begin with the vertical border. Let's be vi, the velocity vector defined by the angle theta and its coordinate cos theta and sin theta. So what happens to this vector if it bounces on the vertical border? It's just a geometrical problem. We can deduce complementary angle and since it is a specular reflection, this is the same angle between the outcoming vector and the vertical border. Then we just have to add the right angle value and we have the orientation of the reflected vector Vr, which is pi minus theta. So this gives us minus cos theta and sin theta. Let's see now the horizontal border. We still have the same vector vi, the horizontal border with a specular reflection property, but this time it's even easier. This gives us directly the orientation of the reflected vector, minus theta, and the coordinates are cos theta and minus sin theta. Let's summarize all of this. We have seen the vertical border reflection, the horizontal border, we can deduce reflection on both sides. So here are all the orientations that can be made by a ball hidden at an angle of theta. If you look close enough, there is actually only two different directions, since everything else is equivalent up to a factor of minus one. So this means that there can be only two directions of trajectory. Let's try it on an example. is indeed the case. 
So we can add these new properties to our class of function. And this will give us f2. Since the particle can go through the boundary, we can also say that it is bounded. Let's say it is a unit square, so it is bounded in every direction between 0 and 1. This will give us f3. Actually, there is another property that we can deduce from the horizontal and vertical reflection. The vertical border has no impact on the y component of B, and the same for the x component on the horizontal border. So think about it, it means that each component are invariant to one sort of border. So it means that it only sees two parallel borders, since the two others have no impact. In this case, each component will inevitably oscillate, like in punk game. So at this point, there is only one class of function that can match this. And this function are called the triangle wave function. So here are our best candidates. And here are the expression of triangle wave bounded between 0 and 1, and for a frequency of 1. But the function can have many other values, like the phase, so the distance between the function and the origin, and the frequency, since it is an oscillating function. So now that we found our best candidate for our target function x and y, we need to find the link between the triangle wave parameters and the BR parameters. Let's start with the initial angle. If we start the trajectory at an angle of theta and we stop it when it reaches a distance of c, then the x component has reached c times cos theta and the y component has reached c times sin of theta. And since the x and y component are oscillating function, this means that the frequency is proportional to cos theta and sin theta. And it is enough to say that Rx is c times cos theta and Ry is c times sin theta because c parameters has no impact on the shape of the trajectory. It can be seen as a time scale factor. It can be removed by substitution on the t variable. This way. So now what about the initial position? Let's place a point on coordinate x0 and y0 and see the impact of changing the y coordinate on the y component. So as you can see, the y coordinate controls the phase of the y component. And in a symmetric way, it is the same for the x axis. So we can rewrite our equation this way. And here the job is done. The Rx and Ry frequencies is given by the coefficient cos theta and sin theta. The phase phi of x and phi of y is the initial position x0 and y0. And let's visualize this solution on an example. And we can go a little bit further in a simulation by changing each parameters and check the impact of the trajectory and on the x and y component.
So let's summarize all the process we've been through. We start from the motion properties of a BR system and build a first class of function. Then we study the impact of reflection on horizontal and vertical border. After that, we added the bounded properties. And finally, we note that the ball was doing a back and forth motion, which led to the conclusion that it had to be a triangle wave function. Then we just had to link parameters of triangle wave function with billiard parameters, and we get the resolution of the billiard square trajectory equation. I find this solution very surprising. It reveals how much square trajectory is just an oscillating system. But the real struggle to resolve such problem is to modelize the impact of reflection on the trajectory. Here, we were dealing with simple boundary, horizontal and vertical, and parallel to each other. But can you imagine how much more complex it could be if we add more side, if we lose parallel properties, or if the shape of the BR is not a polygon? This is why it is still an active area of research. So I will end here. If you like the topic of this video, I recommend you to check my previous video on Lisa Jules curve to have an intuition on how these two concepts, square trajectory and Lisa Jules curves, are connected. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't hesitate to subscribe. See you soon.